Yo, what's up fam, and welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute, but I wanted to make sure that I spent a lot of time with this Sensil Morph so that I can give you guys a proper review. Using the Sensil Morph for about seven days now? So that's about a week? Yeah. Let's not call it a review because I don't want this channel to turn into a review channel. So you really want to know what I think? Check this out. This is the Senso Morph, and if something as slim as this, this is the beginning of my future workflow. Okay, so if you can't tell already, I am very impressed with this device for a few reasons. First reason being it's very slim design and it's easy to carry, it's super lightweight. And to be honest with you, this doesn't feel cheap at all. You would think that something this thin would be kind of flexible or, you know, kind of flimsy and fragile, but this is really high grade quality aluminum body build. And I don't have to worry about moving it around because it is so portable and so lightweight. And it's actually the same exact size as my 10.5 inch iPad Pro. So I think it's safe to say that wherever my iPad goes, this will not be too far from it. This is very easily carry in any backpack or any laptop sleeve or, you know, tablet sleeve or anything like that. This is perfect for the on-the-go producer, uh, mobile producer, and any um, situation that you might find yourself in. This won't be a hassle to bring around. Which actually brings me to my next point, to my second reason that I really like this device. Um, you know, some people, some people like knobs and some people like the faders and stuff like that. And this is a complete touch control device. There are no tangible knobs or no tangible faders. The reason that I think that this is so important is because this is actually future proof. And what I mean by future proof is that over time, hold on. Like I said, some people like buttons and knobs and faders and stuff like that. But over time, transporting these type of machines and transporting these type of controllers can get um, a little, they can take a toll on your devices. Over time, these will start getting really loose. Some might even break off and they won't, they just won't be as responsive as they once used to be. With the controller like the Sensor Morph, this is touch sensitive with daily use no wear and tear the knobs will never fade the faders will never give out on you and you'll always have that touch sensitive future proof design because let's face it as often as we slide our controllers and our ipads and all these devices in and out of our bags these things do begin to these things do begin to give out on you know basic wear and tear so as a musician i've always imagined myself playing music as a tactile you know, I need to touch something. I need to tap something. I need to beat on something. I need to feel what I'm playing. The first time I got it, it was on 38%. And um, I've used this every day for about maybe an hour and a half to two hours. Um, not all at once, just all collectively, you know, throughout the day, I've used it for that amount of time. And I haven't had to charge it. Um, for about a week. So for my workflow, the battery life has been pretty good. And I can honestly say that this might be one of the most intuitive controllers that I've used uh, with my iPad to date. And I say that because this really feels like the future. 
It feels like something that knows what I'm gonna play before I even play it. I really don't have to press hard down on the uh, pads or anything like that. It registers my taps and my touches very, very precisely. Um, I've been hearing about people having issues with accidental touches with other devices and stuff like that, with other touch devices and stuff like that, but I don't have any accidental touches that I'm aware of. Um, if I do, then the Sensor Morph is doing a really good job of canceling those out. Like I said, I'm a musician, so I have to touch things, I have to tap on things, I have to actually feel what I'm playing. This is probably one of the best controllers to do that because of how touch sensitive this is. I've used other controllers that have touch sensitivity and touch velocity the way that this one does, but this is far more intuitive and far more expressive than I expected it to be. Because it's so flat and you don't seem like you have that much travel with on the on the key beds, um, you wouldn't expect it to have uh, s such expression. But it seems like the harder you press down, the more it responds. Which makes sense because other controllers do the same thing, right? But it also responds very well to a very light touch. And you have these LED indicators that lets you know that your, your touch is being registered um, on the device. I'm barely touching on that and very responsive. So I can make quick quick movements and quick adjustments just like that without having to even to try hard or having to adjust my arm in a way or adjust my wrist in a way to where it's, you know, becomes extra work. And if anybody knows me and knows my workflow, you know how I feel about my Bluetooth connectivity. You know how I feel about my Bluetooth devices. This has built-in Bluetooth connectivity, Bluetooth MIDI built-in, and it seems to be flawless. So Bluetooth latency, I don't experience much, if any at all. Um, to be honest with you, everything that I'm doing is happening in real time. Bluetooth MIDI is actually becoming more and more important to me because the less wires that I have to implement into my setup and my workflow, the easier it is to get started and just create. I don't have to worry about plugging anything up and I don't have to worry about wires getting in the way or even, you know, if I if I forget a dongle or if I forget a cord, everything is already there for my setup. The only wires that I feel like is necessary now is just my headphone setup. I always carry that with me anyway. Now, when it comes to making music with the Sensor Morph, this is probably the best controller for the iPad itself, as well as Beatmaker 3. I'm gonna just be honest with you, this is probably the best controller that you're gonna get, um, hands down. And I say that because this has so much built into it, and the setup, the set, so like the Roly Block system, you do have to set it up on a desktop, but from the desktop application, everything is accessible and everything is programmable. You can actually program the morph to pretty much morph into any application that you see fit. So all of these controls can be mapped to anything inside any of your DAWs. This is a class compliant controller, so it will work with Mac, Windows, iOS, and even Android. When setting up the controls on the desktop application, it can get a little confusing if you've never done it before, and if you're having trouble mapping things from your Morph into Beatmaker 3, um, let me know in the comments, I'll have a template to where you can upload this template to your morph and I have a profile for Beatmaker 3 to where you can import the profile for how I set my, how I set my Sensor Morph up with the iPad for uh, Beatmaker 3. Or just let me know in the comments if you guys want me to go through a video um, of how I did that. But the possibilities just seem endless with all these controls being able to control every little thing inside of Beatmaker 3 or any of your other DAWs. Whether you're on an iPad, a MacBook, a Windows computer, you can control your Ableton Live, Logic Pros, whatever you have, it'll work inside. So we have all our transport control buttons. And as you can see here that I already have them mapped to do 
exactly what they say they'll do. So I have my loop button, which turns on the loop recording inside of Beatmaker 3. So I'll press the loop button. You can see that, that the loop button turns off and on as I press it on. And I can press the record button and it starts to record. Press the stop button and it stops. See barely no, no latency. As I'm pressing these things, these things are happening like instantaneously. Of course you have the 16 pads over here and they work just like the regular pads. Unlike the Roly Blocks controller, you also have macros built in over to the right. And within Beatmaker 3, you, you can literally program these macros to do literally anything you want. So let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see me um, go through a walkthrough of how I did that. As a matter of fact, let me do a quick example for you guys. So you can see how easy it could be to do any type of macro controls and some automations on the fly. And even during um, live performances, you can see how this could be a game changer when it comes to these macro controls and how much you can do inside of Beatmaker 3. So I know a lot of you have questions about MPE capabilities and you probably seen me doing some pitch bending in the example that I showed you earlier where I took a note it that way um that is not mpe unfortunately beatmaker 3 still does not support mpe functionality in this current version as of this video however there is a mpe function built into the sensor app so all you have to do is activate it in the setup it'll be available on your sensor morph so if you just so happen to use this outside of beatmaker 3 yes it will in theory Yes, it will work inside of your other applications and DAWs if you have uh, something like GarageBand or the Roly app or um, any any plugin or um, audio instrument that uses MPE um, expression. But what this actually is, though, is uh, it's not MPE, but it is a form of. Um, it is a form of pitch bending. So if we go into our instrument, you can see the pitch pitch wheel here. And all I'm doing is dragging my finger across, across the sensor morph. And you can change the threshold. So if you wanted to bend the note a little bit to where it'll bend a little bit more, or bend, bend, uh, or it takes less to bend that note. So that is customizable with, with inside the Sensor app. All 
All right, so those are the things that I do like about it. And there are a couple of things that I wish were a little bit different or some things that I think that Sensor could improve on on the next model. The first one being that um, it is still micro USB uh, charging. I would have liked to see a USB type C connection so that I could have a universal charger for all the rest of my devices and I wouldn't have to bring extra chargers around, but hey. Second thing, um, I wish that there was a way to switch in between profiles as I switch in between synthesizers and um, audio instruments. I wish I didn't have to go into the app on the laptop, on the desktop. There's a big bar at the top. I wish there was like a small LED screen or something like that and some additional buttons so that I can see exactly which profiles or which layouts that I'm using at the time so that if I switch in between synths then I have a different layout or a different profile um, for those uh, synthesizers and those um, audio instruments. So that is the sense of morph with the iPad and Beatmaker 3 and I'm telling you the possibilities are endless. I've only scratched the surface with this controller and I feel like there's so much more that it can do. I just haven't even tapped into it yet. I've only had it for a week and this is everything that I've been able to do with it so far. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see me do with this controller. The sky is the limit. I got really am excited to see what else I will come up with as far as mapping controls and different effects and automations that I'll be able to do with um, with the Sensor Morph inside of Beatmaker 3 or any of my other DAWs um, using this controller going forward with any other device. Since it is class compliant, I can hook this up into any of my control, any of my devices and feel free um, just creating with that controller. Now there are other overlays and these are what they call the overlays. You have the drum pad and you have the keyboard like the piano and you have uh, a video editing overlay. And I know everybody's asking me will this replace any of my other controllers and I don't think so and I'll probably explain that in another video but this will definitely take a place in my everyday carry. I will carry this every day. Um, to make music and make beats on my iPad from now on as well as all of my other devices because it just works. So that's been my take on the Sensor Morph controller after using it for about a week and um, I'm excited to see the stuff that we come up with. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful to anybody. If you're thinking about picking one up, I will drop a link. It is an affiliate link through amazon.com. It is one of my affiliate links. And if you do purchase this through my link, I will get a small commission, which does help the channel. But you don't have to use my link. You can actually get it $50 cheaper if you just go straight through senso.com. Uh, use the link if you want. If you want to support the channel, I would appreciate it. If not, go to Pencil.com and I'll drop a link down down below. So yeah, let me know if you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments what you're excited to see happen with the Sensor Morph and how you will use it in your workflow. Once again, this has been Brandon Rico. Thanks for rocking with me. Thanks for rocking with the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.